Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mo, and once again, welcome into my channel, Mo on the Rocks. So, yes, today we'll be discussing a very important issue. A nuclear bomb has been dropped by Canada. And when I say it's a nuclear bomb, it's not a regular nuclear bomb that we know. No, 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 no. Justin Trudeau has decided to drop a nuclear bomb from his mouth. And after the G20 summit, he has faced a lot of criticism and a lot of backlash, not only from his own country, but from the entire world's media. Leaders at G20 pull up by PM Modi for encouraging extremist activity. Canada's opposition parties are now gunning for Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister after the G20 summit. India has accused Canada of basically shielding anti-India extremist elements, elements that according to a so former that, uh, issue Canada's by India media also ago, has now his aircraft. Put out Trudeau came to G20, got secluded and then left. Now the thing is that he has decided to take revenge on that and literally dropped a bombshell from his own stupid mouth. Now let's discuss what he has said because for me Justin Trudeau definitely a very special character indeed or you can say a very strange one too. I have never seen a character like him and I cannot imagine a character like him into the position of a Prime Minister of a big and promising country like Canada. I have never seen a Prime Minister like him who can literally sacrifice his entire country for his own vendetta. It's not a new thing right now to tell you what he has done. Almost all of you know what he has done. And those people who don't know what he has done, let's watch this small clip. Mr. Speaker, today I'm rising to inform the House of an extremely serious matter. I just informed the leaders of the opposition directly that I want now to speak with all Canadians. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. So this is how you throw a nuclear bomb from your mouth. This is not the full video. You can see the full clip at the end of this podcast. I'll put it over there. Basically, he is accusing our country's secret agency, which we all know as RAW, killing this person called Hardeep Singh Nirjar. Today, we will discuss all the major key points. But before going further, please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. So we need to answer these few questions to know what is going on right now. Who is Justin Trudeau? Who is this Hardeep Singh Nirjar and how did he die? What is Khalistani movement? Why Justin Trudeau blamed the murder of Hardeep Singh Nirjar on India? How did it affect Canada and India? And last but not the least, what will be the future consequences? Let's go one by one. First, who is Justin Trudeau? Justin Pierce James Trudeau is the eldest son of the former Prime Minister of Canada, Pierce Trudeau, and currently serving as 23rd Prime Minister of Canada since 2015 and the leader of the Liberal Party. Justin Trudeau usually has an outer image of an athletic, flamboyant, a ladies' man, a fashion icon, and an adorable politician, but also carry a clear and real image of a politician who plays identity politics, gets caught in grouping scandals, does not respect due processes, deflects accountability questions, dropped the ball on COVID vaccines, can't deal with two Canadian hostages in China, plays foot size with extremists, etc. etc. Whatever he says or does, can't be a serious matter because he never does anything to actual serious matters. You can see an article which has been released by BBC on 23rd May. Now if we see the article and just mind it this is not a small article this has been released by BBC itself. I'll be putting all those links in the description box so that you can check it out. Chinese has been interfering in Canada's election and each and every aspect of Canada's government. Trudeau has been responding in a very naive way. No action has been taken by Trudeau for Chinese interference. Not a long time ago, a Chinese executive was arrested on the land of Canada for US fraud charges and in exchange China took hostage of two Canadian citizens in China. And guess what the Prime Minister of Canada did? Nothing. Despite of failing terribly to promote his internal policy within his own country, he is always poking nose and interfering in other countries' internal policy that also with pride. According to CTV News, 3 in 10 people says just Justin Trudeau is the worst. If you see YouTube, you can see so many Canadians literally ranting about their own Prime Minister. Also, currently he is 
15 points below the opposition leader so basically he is losing he is losing the game he is losing the power he is losing the election and that's the reason he is igniting the matches and supporting the khalistan and here it comes the next question what is khalistan and what do you mean by khalistani movement the idea for an independent land for sikhs goes back to pre partition india when the concept of a separate land for sikhs in india was been considered in 1930s and 1940s which they named khalistan or the land of khalsa the notion of a khalistan separated from india resurfaced in a dramatic way in the large scale militant uprising that erupted in the punjab in 1980s on 1st june 1984 after negotiation with the militants failed the former prime minister of india indira gandhi ordered the army to launch operation blue star attacking the golden temple and scores of the sikh temples and sites across punjab this operation also led to the assassination of prime minister indira gandhi on 31st october 1984 by two of her sikh bodyguards as an act of revenge in the 1900s the first major wave of sikhs the majority of whom were men moved to canada mostly to work as laborers logging in british columbia and manufacturing in ontario among those many khalistani sikh activists fled india and went to canada where they were welcomed by a large sikh community many of whom had been sympathetic to the khalistani idea those sikhs also moved to britain australia and united states they have been particularly drawn to canada because of the parallel value systems a sizable community of sikhs has been growing in the country since the early 20th century especially in british columbia and ontario the support for khalistan is illegal in india in canada sikh activists are able to speak freely in early 2018 some militant groups were arrested by police in punjab india the recent extremism is backed by pakistan's inter services intelligence isi and khalistani sympathizers in canada italy and the uk now this question also creates another couple of extended bonus question one how dangerous this khalistan is are and why they has been marked as terrorist number 2 Why the Canadian government has been sympathetic to this Khalistani movement? Well, recently Khalistani sympathizer to set the Indian consulate in San Francisco on fire. This event starkly highlighted the criminal nature of the activities undertaken by these groups. They had moved beyond the boundaries of the peaceful protest. FBI reportedly planning to enforce criminal laws against such groups and individuals. Khalistan separatist movement is a dangerous and violent ideology that has no place in the 21st century. In other months they There has been a number of incidents of violence and intimidation targeting Indian diplomats and institutions in India, the United States and Australia. These incidents are a clear reminder of the threat posed by the Khalistan movement. Another poster started circulating on the internet. The poster threatened the High Commissioner of India in Australia, Manpreet Vora, and the Consulate General of India in Melbourne, Dr. Sushil Kumar. The poster called for the two diplomats to be killed and warned that they were not safe anywhere in the world. In 1985, the Air India Flight 182 was bombed by Khalistani extremists, killing 329 people, including 280 Canadian citizens. Khalistani movement is also trying to spread its separatist ideology through propaganda and misinformation. In June a parade by pro Khalistani supporters head of the Operation Blue Star anniversary featured a float depicting the assassination of India's late Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. The parade in Ontario's Great Toronto area also saw the High Commission in Ottawa expressing displeasure to the Canadian Foreign Ministry. Apart from that, there are 43 individuals considered as terrorists who are hiding in Canada and supports Khalistan and funds anti-Indian activities like killings, extortions, running crime syndicates and allegedly involved in conspiring and to carry out terror attacks in Delhi and were obtaining funds through smart angling of weapons and most recently Khalistan leader Gurpatwan Singh Pannu threatened Indians and told them to leave the country Indo Canadian Hindus you have repudiated your allegiance to Canada and Canadian constitution your destination is India leave Canada go to India pro Khalistan Sikhs have always been loyal to Canada they have always sided with Canada and they have upheld the law and the Pannu faces 22 criminal cases in Punjab including 3 of sedition now let's discuss why the canadian government has been sympathetic to the khalistan movement the diaspora community of sikh constitutes 6% of the canada's population as of 2021 census a higher percentage of the total population than in india they make up a significant voting block in the country and carry political agenda in fact there are more sikhs in canada's cabinet than in india 
Indians. While Sikhs are a small minority in India, they make up a large portion of the South Asians in Canada. Here in India, there is no such thing called Khalistan. Behind the shield of free speech, Canadian government is supporting the Khalistanis with full power, freedom and resources. And guess what? Who is leading the path and becoming the puppet of the Khalistanis? The Prime Minister himself. To gain the majority vote banks of the Sikh community, this man is ready to destroy his own country and it's not too far away where Canada will become Pakistan 2.0. Just to get votes, a Prime Minister literally allowing a group of extremists to do violence, riots and every other illegal activities. Like father, like son, just like Justin Trudeau, his father refused an extradition request of Khalistani terrorist Talwar Singh Parmar along with Indrajit Singh Reyat in 1982. These people who were accused of killing police officers in India and the Air India bombing in 1985. And guess what? The moment Justin Trudeau became the Prime Minister of Canada in 2006, he released Indrajit Singh Reyat from jail. According to media, Canada's involvement can be found in significant violent conflicts worldwide, including the Sri Lanka Civil War, the Ukraine conflict, Sikh separatism, and the assassination of Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Canada hosts the primary assassination of Bangladesh founder Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and now Justin Trudeau decides to take the drama to next level. He talks about false principles and we talks about facts. Now let's talk about the man of the hour Hardip Singh Nijjar and how did he die? Hardip Singh Nijjar born in Punjab moved to Canada in 1997 where he married, had two sons and worked as a plumber. He was the chief leader of Khalistan and mastermind behind the Khalistan Tiger Force KTF, a banned militant group in the country. He was 45 years old when he was shot dead by two masked gunmen outside a Sikh temple in Vancouver suburb on a June summer evening this year. Now let's try to find out how one man's death affected Canada and India's relationship. Justin Trudeau's credible allegations suggested a potential connection between the agents associated with the Indian government and the assassination. So basically his proof is guessing. Here is a prime minister who like to blame on a bigger level like countries without any substantial proof. It's like he wakes up in the morning and all of a sudden he decides to play the blame game. Okay, so Trudeau and his team decides to expel a senior Indian diplomat in connection to the assassination of this Khalistani terrorist. Canada is such a sweet professional country that they don't even care to jeopardize the matter of security of a senior diplomat and decides to disclose his name in a press conference. It feels like the country is getting run not by the fellows but by a bunch of buffaloes. Anyway, our country decides to shake Canada's face and call Canadian Ambassador Cameron Mackey to convey its decision to expel Oliver Sylvester, Canadian Intelligence Agency Station Chief in India under official cover. And that also our government conveyed this message to the Canadian Ambassador within 4 minutes. Just imagine, 4 minutes. Now that is too much of an insult bro. Just imagine knowing your name in a press conference and getting a letter to leave the office is, is something else. But People telling you on your face that pack your bags and leave the country within 5 days or you have to literally swim back to Canada is definitely a big insult man. Anyway, then Trudeau calmed down a bit and expressed in another press conference that he don't want to provoke India. No, he just want to make us understand that his hands are ties and he is the puppet of Khalistan. We got you bro. Canada has failed to show bullet strong evidence despite asking from them multiple times on our behalf. Whereas India has given a list of 43 terrorists, most wanted list, multiple times to Trudeau and his government. Even requested to take control of the extremist action which is going on inside Canada. But he just want to sleep, as we all know. Well, his five eyes allies with whom he planned to corner India, they have put Canada in front and went to hide into the dark by themselves. India again decides to slap Canada once again by stop issuing visa to the Canadian citizen. Where to go, India? Now it's my takes. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau clearly stated that he will not be compromising any kind of security issues which can be harmful for his citizen and I do absolutely agree with him. But if you flip the coin on the other side, then you will see he's basically the death of a terrorist. Moreover, he's standing in front of everyone in the House of Commons, which is sort of like our parliament, and in the opening statement, he is accusing India without any solid proof or without anything at all. So, do you think that this should be the normal nature of a prime minister to conduct its international policy or to conduct his own behavior? He, this is so dumb, and he has proved once again that he is the master of dumbness. I have never seen a prime minister to behave such a reckless way, where he will be sacrificing everything, putting his 
country's interest his you know all those bilateral relationships all those policies all those investments all those relationships between two friendly nations at stake just because of his own personal vendetta and what is his own personal vendetta his vote banks indian diaspora in canada is huge india has taken a decision of not giving any more visas to the canadian citizen two things may come out of it one violence and terrorism will not be spread cross border another is as we all know that a major portion of the population are of indian origin they will face difficulties to contact do business dealings visit their families taking care of the properties etc etc and there will be a time when they will feel frustrated and will put pressure on the prime minister justin trudeau to mend the relationship and end this matter with india either by producing concrete evidence or asking for an apology you know the funny thing is most of this young generation of khalistan has not seen the land of india by themselves by their own eyes they have no idea how the sikh community is staying right now in this present india they only rely on this relic stories of their ancestors you know when i openly said my opinion on social media one man opposed me i will not disclose his identity because i'm not so dumb like the prime minister of course but definitely would like to share what we discussed he is a physician in ontario and he told me by the way he is in and he told me many things which includes pure hate against india and supported khalistan with pride he told me that khalistan is all like and i quote unique identities peaceful protester requesting for separate homeland well i would like to give him the answer to all those people who support khalistan to all those people who support violence to all those people who think that behavior like radical people or behavior like extremist is okay to all those people who think that they can shed blood and they can ask for homeland is absolutely wrong and for them this is my answer man before feeling sorry for me why don't you get the full info a full list of informations along with the individual terrorist names has been handed over your country's diplomat long time ago Even in G20 summit our prime minister has requested your prime minister to take control of the situation and here you are saying that we haven't provided any information and no it's not about unique identity wanting an independent homeland it's a group of people planting time bomb on air india flight and killing more than 300 innocent people were more than 200 were canadian citizens themselves and you are calling them ethnic group with unique identity this unique identity of yours released a video where they are threatening where they are threatening the indians to leave the country or they has to face the consequence and you are calling them unique identity want independent homeland right you are portraying them as they are the innocent souls this unique identity of yours has created a float where a murder has been promoted and publicly displayed on a float pushing the violent circumstances in the society this unique identity of yours vandalizing temples and writing hateful messages in the walls of the temples gives you the idea of peaceful people asking for independent homeland people in punjab and other areas has registered dozens of police cases against them for instigating violence this unique identity of yours has used false identity and passport and went to canada and asked for citizenship which your prime minister eventually gave for his vote bank instead of deploying them back this unique identity of yours has been tagged as terrorist for so, for so many reasons which may be not known to you you know what is the problem and there are unique identity like you who believes that behaviors like radicals is right it's a very shameful for us and we regret that all of this you unique identity including you comes from our land and carries the blood of sikh community who used to shed their blood for their loved one instead of taking their lives for more than 300 people will definitely eagerly wait and see your prime minister showing some good evidence cause if he fails to do so then not only he will hamper his own reputation but will hamper the reputation of people like you who support radicals who support violence and who support non human activities on the face of this earth so just pray If you like this video then thumbs up share this video I usually post content in Bengali language and English language or so most of my videos are subtitled so do subscribe my channel do support me and like and share this video Mr Speaker Today I'm rising to inform the house of an extremely serious matter I just informed the leaders of the opposition directly that I want now to speak with all Canadians. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijjar. 
Canada is a rule of law country. The protection of our citizens and defence of our sovereignty are fundamental. Our top priorities have therefore been, one, that our law enforcement and security agencies ensure the continued safety of all Canadians, and two, that all steps be taken to hold perpetrators of this murder to account. Canada has declared its deep concerns to the top intelligence and security officials of the Indian government. Last week at the G20, I brought them personally and directly to Prime Minister Modi in no uncertain terms. Any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty. It is contrary to the fundamental rules by which free, open and democratic societies conduct themselves. As you would expect, we've been working closely and coordinating with our allies on this very serious matter. In the strongest possible terms, I continue to urge the Government of India to cooperate with Canada to get to the bottom of this matter. I also expect it to re reiterate that its position on extrajudicial operations in another country is clearly and unequivocally in line with international law. I know many Canadians, particularly members of the Indo-Canadian community, are feeling angry or perhaps frightened right now. Let us not allow this to change us. Let us remain calm and steadfast in our commitment to our democratic principles and our adherence to the rule of law. This is who we are and what we do as Canadians.